Hi, everybody. This video is going to be completely different than anything we've ever done. This is New Year's Day uh, 2023, and, um, and I'm going to introduce you to our sons. Kathy and I, we, we've always wanted to get some of our sons into the video. Uh, so you're going to meet both our sons, Greg and Alex. What I'm going to do is, is going to talk about a new emerging technology. One of my sons has, has actually been working with it a little bit. He doesn't work for the company. What he does is uh, um, you know, he works on artificial intelligence. And he's going to talk a little bit about it. So what we're doing here is, is this is a Zoom call. We do a Zoom call every Sunday morning. And uh, so you're going to see a little bit of that and to see how our conversations turn, having two sons at work in uh, as computer professionals. Uh, so we hope you enjoy it. It's a whole lot different. And for those of you that might be uh, excited about the emerging technology, you know, then, you know, we're glad you're here visiting us. And for more of our regular visitors, um, I will get to the important question by the end. So just stick with us, please. Happy 2023. This is New Year's morning. I'm on a phone Zoom call with my sons, Greg and Alex, two computer professionals, and this is how it turns out. Hey, Google. Hey, Siri. Hey, GPT. What is GPT, uh, uh, Greg? So, so GPT is, is a chat box. I mean, th this is something that that you know computer researchers have been working on for I don't, the last thirty years is to is to come up with a chat box that that provides you know human type conversation feedback can retain context of the larger conversation. It, it's it's really been done, been a toy problem for for researchers for the past thirty years. And this model is, it's one of the more exceptional models that I've seen. You know, I do a little bit of modeling stuff like this, you know, for the, for the work that I do. But th this one is truly fascinating. And they did a couple breakthrough things that I think really differentiate this model from some of the other models. So, so GPT is, it stands for Generative Pre-trained Transformer. Transformer is the type of architecture a lot of these natural language processing models use today. They're highly efficient. They can distribute the learning process and they they can make that training quite quite tractable in that regard i still say tractable but people are using massive computer clusters that train for you know months at a time on vast swaths of knowledge but but in in the computer science world transformers can make that a little bit more of a tractable problem and then the generative part here is is referring to its ability to generate information. And actually this information is, is relatively stochastic. So it's not going to produce the same output for the same prompt every time. So there's some probabilistic nature to it as well. And then the pre-trained is, there's a couple of steps in the training process. We can, we can talk about a little bit about that in the paper. But, but what I think is, is so fascinating about this is, is they've, they've- A few moments later, take instructions. So a lot of the prompts that they were training this, this model on is instructional prompts, like write me a summary for this, or tell me about this, you know? So, so it's, it's really meant, you know, I, to some degree, I think this could replace like a secretary, right? You could write me a letter of recommendation for this person with this parameters and it'll do something like that. And I, and I think that's quite interesting. One of the other things that I think is interesting is, you know, this these prompts here i was asking how or i was asking chat gpt how old barack obama was and it told me that he was born on august 4th 1961 so he is currently 62 years old but if you come over here and you look at barack obama's age well it tells you that he's actually 61. so one of the things about this model is it it is trained on data from well actually it's trained on data from 2021 but it, it doesn't really have a good estimation of, of the current date and time. So I had to work with it a little bit. And so I asked what the date was today. And you know here it, it even forfeits that it was trained on knowledge from, from 2021. And now I'm trying to have the model make an assumption. And I say, assuming today's date is January 1st, then wouldn't Barack Obama be 61? 
And you know, I had to I had to work with that a little bit here. I had to rephrase my question. But ultimately I got it to make that assumption. If the current date is January 1st, 2023, then Barack Obama would be 61 years old. This is fascinating to me because it's not just it's not just regurgitating information, it's able to deduce information on the fly. So using the conversation that we've had, and I can tell it to make an assumption about the date and time, then it can it's doing math on the back end to, to determine what his actual age is. And that is very cool. And, and actually what they found- A few moments later. This is the other thing that's a little bit fascinating to me is I can actually get chat GPT to code for me. So, you know- That's what I was gonna say, Alex asked you if it can code. Yeah, that's and, right. Yeah, go ahead. That's right. So, so my lab mate and I, a couple of days ago, we were working on solving a problem and there's there's sort of a you know a trivial step we had to take in that problem that both of us knew that there was an efficient algorithm to do something like that, but we just thought we would ask ChatGPT and, and see what it said. And so we asked it, you know, how can we identify efficiently that two sets can share an element? So like taking the intersection between two sets, but we just want to know if there's any element. So can you write me efficient code to determine if two sets contain at least one shared element? And so it will provide me code to do exactly what I said. And actually, I, I think the, the fascinating thing is it'll even give me time complexity for something like this, uh, assuming that I'm asking for efficient code. Uh, and, and what's really cool here is, is technically this model was trained on a small amount of programming data, but certainly not enough to justify it being able to learn this if you were to train the model on code uh, on that small set of code independently. But it was actually, you know, there are a couple steps in the training process. One is, you know, trained over large swaths of data. The other one was trained over human feedback. And uh, with using this methodology, they were actually able to get pretty good performance on tasks well outside of the, the types of data that it had seen before. Can you ask it to do the same thing in data weave? In data weave, uh, that's what, that's what maybe, I maybe, maybe, and actually, that that's a that's an interesting question because I've been told I've not queried this thing at all, um, but I've been told that you can ask it different lang or you can ask questions in different languages, <laughs> and it'll still do a pretty good job at inferring those other languages as well, even though most of the data it was trained on was English. Mm. Um, can you write me efficient code in data weave? Is it like that? Uh, I'm on my phone so I can barely see. Yeah, it's one word. Yeah. Okay. Does this look great? It seemed to recognize data weave. Let me turn my phone. It, I mean, it's, it, uh, oh yeah, look at that. I mean, it's using intersection, right? So it's using some pre-built function in data weave, it okay. looks like. Yeah. You know, I've got to admit that I've never seen intersect, um, but I, I believe it. It looks yeah. like it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, yeah, I mean, doing, it's, it's doing some amazing new things. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, okay. and efficient Did it okay say efficient? i got i gotta i gotta for the sake of, of what we're doing right here right now with this call uh this is our normal call we get into some things that uh, because i have two sons that are computer professionals that uh you know sometimes it, it turns to this type of conversation uh but anyway um don't let him fool you it's mostly youtube <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it's for YouTube <laughs> that I did, that I that I've tried to record something here, and uh, here's the question everybody wants to know. Uh, Greg, you write artificial intelligence, and Ed, you're a computer professional too. Why? How can you master 
the algorithms and the artificial intelligence that are put into YouTube to get you more views, more subscribers, more mm. likes. And uh, how does that all work? Ask Chat GPT. How, how do, do I get, more get a lot of free, I'm getting a lot of freezing up here. YouTube. Yeah, I noticed you're, you're freezing up a little bit. Well, we can ask ChatGPT. I I think it's this is likely going to be some regurgitation off of what you would get from a from a Google search. Um, if you wanted to infer what the algorithm is on on the back end, you'd probably have to you'd have to probably train a different model. I'd say you'd you'd want input and and output. Output being like views and subscriber gains. Input being the types of videos, different different meta knowledge. Um, and you need you'd need to see a lot of examples like that. I think this is going to be likely just stuff you'd get from a normal Google search. Okay, so here's the question, Dr. Greg. Yeah. When are you going to work on something that's going to help dear old dad master the YouTube universe? Uh, I don't think there. I there's. There's a perfect code that could do something like that. Um, I, I don't know. What do you want me to write you? You want me to write you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, you know. But uh, yeah, you know. So this is this is how our conversations go every Sunday morning, and we look at different things that they're working on and whatnot. This isn't something that either one of my sons is working on. Uh, Alex uh, works on insurance stuff as a computer professional also and uh and so just a little bit you know happy new year everybody have a great 2023 and by the end of the year greg will have mastered the artificial intelligence to uh universe there you go take care love you all and see you soon with hopefully 10,000 subscribers, <laughs> getting thousands of views, and uh, moving on. Take care, everybody. Love you all. Happy New Year.